Hello, folks, and welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, first of all, I'm really excited to create what I'm going to call a passive income really series of evergreen. What does that mean? Well, it's going to be a combination of different strategies and tactics and how you can get started really investing in passive income. Uh, I'm sure you have heard the news out there that it's great to be sleeping and making money. That is absolutely true. It's not a myth, by the way. And uh, if this is the first time that you're meeting me, by all means, my name is Liz Soria. I am a tax accountant and also a business advisor, but most importantly, I specialize in two niches, and that is the real estate, because I'm also an investor, but also in e-commerce, in Amazon, eBay, done that too. I do the talk and I do the walk. And I always think that's so important for anyone to know that because even though I crunch numbers and I love what I do, I also need to get in the opposite side of other people's shoes and understand what they go through to gain their experience and what is the turn and error? Because in every industry, there's always something goes wrong, but there's a lot of good stuff to happen. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to tell you exactly the breakdown. I'm going to share with you a lot of things I have learned throughout many years. Uh, I've been in business for over a decade and helped many entrepreneurs for many years. Like I said, they're landlords, they own multifamilies, they own buildings. Some people own single family homes. Um, others have owned mobile homes. Uh, land. Um, and I think in the very first series that you're going to get from like this, this, this green in the first part of the series of passive income, I'm going to get started with why is it a better return to invest in condos or single family homes. So we're going to go ahead and dive in right now, right now, because I want you to learn as much as possible. And like I said, I love sharing this information. So are you ready? I hope you are. Okay. All right. I hope you're saying yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do is a lot of people have told me when they want to get started in real estate, Liz, you know, I'm not too sure if I want to become a landlord. Now we know if you become a landlord, you probably have heard this many times and many other, you know, um, you know, gurus out there that one of the things they tell you is that what better, right? To invest in real estate and then people tell me yeah but do i really want to get a call you know in the middle of the night with a complaint because something broke in the house or you know the toilets are not flushing or you know some electrical problem whatever it might be you know um the reality is if your type of personality is not about being interrupted you don't want to hear these kind of complaints and having headaches there's a solution to that. Yeah, of course there is. And the solution is very simple. Whether you hire a property manager or you hire somebody else who can help you, or perhaps you go into a partnership with other people who have invested prior in, you know, in property, and then you become like an investor where all you're doing is what's called a hard lender money. If you don't know what that is, these are groups of investors that lend out money to individuals like you who maybe want to just buy a single or two properties, but they don't have all the funds available. So in return for a very high, yes, interest of sometimes can range anything from 8% all the way I see it as high as 15%. Yeah. They actually allow you to borrow money and you only pay interest. Okay. And a lot of these type of loans can be for six months, only 12 months. And that gives you sufficient time to purchase maybe a condominium or in this account, you know, in this case, a single family home and then do the necessary re repairs or what we call rehabs. And in that event, once you're done, hopefully you can flip the property if that's what you want to get into. And by the way, for those who I know some people already have been asking me a few questions um, when they knew I was going to come out with this release of real estate for passive income. And one of the things I was asked is, okay, well, Liz, in the event that I don't want to buy a single family home, I don't want to buy a condo. I do not want to buy a townhouse. I don't even want to get a manufactured home, which is, like I said, a separate episode that I'm doing just for that. And by the way, it's going to be a long one. It's like, it's going to be probably 25, 30 minutes. So get ready for that one. Uh, so make the time at least, maybe you can split it. That would be better. But anyhow, then there's other, uh, there's other ways that you can still be involved, you know, inside the real estate 
and still make passive income without actually owning property. That's right. And if you have any, in somewhere around this area, there's going to be a video, okay? And that was a separate series that I created, which is called Alternative Real Estate Investment. In that, I talk completely something different. I talk about real estate investment trusts, right? Stocks that you can invest just in real estate. I also talk about land, purchasing raw land or developed land. Or third, I also talk about the fact that you can buy tax liens. Okay, so I'm not gonna get into this in this series. Like I said, click whatever video is around the screen here where you're gonna be able to actually get that separate training if you're that kind of person, which is fine. Some people just don't wanna deal with repairs. They don't wanna hold properties. They don't wanna do that. And that's, like I said, that's perfectly fine. But there are other ways. Either way, we're here to make passive income. So let me go ahead and dive in. And like I say, I'm going to talk about a little about this article that I'm sharing, which is called Which Has a Better Return Investment? Condos or Single Family Homes. So this actual article I was able to um that I'm sharing right now on screen. And then, like I say, I'm gonna to try to um put in the uh actually the description box i almost forgot my thought there for a moment sorry uh i'm gonna it's called nolo.com n-o-l.com nolo and o-l-o.com and article title is which has a better return investment condos or single family now i'm gonna say something to you and you can obviously go back and read this more in detail appreciation potential is one of the biggest things why because the reality is that a condo can acquire a lot of equity, mostly like any other property, location, location, location. Now, there's a downside to condominiums versus to home, and they're always gonna be. The only condos I have truly seen through all my years of true investment is, and I have owned, by the way, three condos, that's right, three condominiums. Uh, my experience has been all right, uh, now, these were condominiums that, yes, I live in my, in my condominiums, but I also, you know, was a landlord, and I rent these, some of these condominiums. And I can tell you from my own experience and from talking to many, many other, you know, uh, investors out there in, in, in these type of properties, is there, unfortunately, one of the biggest problems that you have is they do not really acquire so much equity like single-family homes or multifamily, maybe you own a duplex or triplex, uh, they do not. And the main reason is because they remember that a condominium is air property, remember that, air property. I don't care if you're on the first floor, that's still air property because the walls and the ceiling belongs to another unit. So therefore, that is not just your property. So that's why they call it air property. Now, the only times I seen really a condo uh, you know, or penthouse as they call them um, for the last floor, really gain a lot of equity is because there were maybe an ocean view, right? Or intercoastal, or maybe it was a lake view, something that it was in a very prime location and with a, you know, outstanding view to the, some sort of water, you know, ocean or lake that really was able to increase the value of that condominium. Otherwise, most condos do not increase as much as a house. Again, location, location, it's extremely important. Downside of condos, and again, I'm telling you from my own experience and discussing this with groups of uh, RIA, uh, which I do attend real estate investment groups, I also seen where the biggest problem is not having control over the property. And I think some of you who might be listening or watching, like I said, through the video, might agree with me in that sense, because the problem is that we have dissociations. Associations are always going to try to, you know, have control over your property. That's right. Uh, whether, whether you can rent it, uh, whether there's an age restriction, whether you can have pets, uh, you know, whether you can have seasonal rentals. Uh, I mean, there's so many restrictions. I mean, there's sometimes it's like, it feels almost for my, again, I speak from what I have been through. Um, I would probably or rarely uh, purchase another condo, <laughs> put it that way, because my experience hasn't been really the best. 
And like I said, not one, not two, but three condos I have owned. And in all the condominiums, I have invested so much money in doing upgrades and renovations. And when I came to selling, I felt like, yeah, I made a little gain, but nothing compared if I have owned a real house. Or even perhaps, like I said, maybe even a manufacturing home. Um, so unfortunately, because it's not attached to a land, you lose a lot of value in that type of property, which are condominiums. And again, if you want to rent, then because there's so many restrictions, so difficult that to me, again, if you were to say to me, Liz, what would you do tomorrow? If you have opportunity, a, a beautiful condo, even with a wonderful, you know, view versus to, you know, even a smaller house. Okay. Uh, I would just really tell you right now, I would say, I, I would just run away from the condo <laughs> and I mean, go straight to, to the single family home or even like I said, a mobile home. That's right. You heard me right. Or a town home, but anything that does not have to do at all with association, HOA, homeowners association, as they call it, I would just keep away from them, except I seen a situation where one of the investors who was a client of mine, he actually bought two units inside a very small building. There were only like, I think 10 units, okay? So he was able to purchase two and then three, and next thing he knew, he was like half of the building was his. That's a different, that's a different perspective because now he gets to vote in the majority and guess what? He has a very good control. He's able to rent the units. So he's the president of the building, but it was less than 10 units. In a situation like that, I could see an exception that maybe even I would do in, in the future. But other than that, if it's not a really small community, I don't picture myself buying again another condominium. I, I, I don't. And again, I have good and bad experiences, but again, is the condo commando that happens in the condominium. Is the people who have been there a very long time that sometimes they just make up laws that don't even exist in the condominium documents or the bylaws or you know the rules that we, we live by as they call them. And everything is a lot of seniority, a lot of picking and choosing who who's gonna get to uh, follow the rules and who gets exceptions. Um, so again, again, that's been my experience. Maybe yours has been better, but I know when we talk about passive income and to really invest in a very savvy way, the best thing is for you to always have your piece of land attached to a house. Okay. And why do I say attached to a house? Because yes, you can also buy houses in a HOA community. So watch out with that too, because while you might have to outweigh, you know, the pros and cons. So for an example, if you're really retired or in a certain age that you're like, Liz, I don't want to worry about cutting the grass, about the pavement. I want to have a nice clean pool and a beautiful clubhouse and maybe a gym that's going to be included in the community. Then great. Then in that case, all you have to do, it's pop, you know, pay a lot rent, right? for that community, there could be a couple hundred dollars a month easily, okay? And that's fine. Again, it depends where you're at in your life, okay? But if you really want to have full control, I would not suggest for you to go into any type of HOA community because again, you're not gonna have the control that you really want to have. Okay, so this series, like I said, I have covered so far about condo versus to really single family homes. And like I said, there's gonna be another part that I did exclusively only in manufacturing homes because yes, I have owned manufacturing homes too. Uh, and I really believe that this is a phenomenal alternative way of investing that could cost a lot less and yet, you can even flip these type of mobile homes or you can actually rent them out. But again, watch out because yes, all these mobile homes are also in what we call community parks. And when they're in community parks, you're gonna have the same thing going on. You're gonna have what they call a manager on site that is gonna control who you can rent, who can move in with you, how you can probably even pin your manufacturer home. It's some of them have so, so much restrictions 
that is ridiculous. So watch out with that. Now, it's a great investment, don't get me wrong, if you're in a nice community where you have a good relationship with a park manager, and then you're able to really invest. But anyhow, that's going to be a lot more detailed. Like I said, that's going to be, by the way, a very lengthy video. But I think it'd be worth your time because if you have enough cash right now and you don't want to go through a hard lender, which I understand that can be very expensive, then in that case, you might be able to have sufficient money if you have less than thirty, forty thousand dollars to invest. That's as little as it will re require to buy into a manufactured home. Again, I'm going to be talking about the differences about why you might still want to buy in a community versus to actually owning a mobile home okay as we call it attached to land uh in the difference between those two so anyhow i hope so far this information has been value to you and if it has as always i always tell my subscribers you know like share comment and again if you haven't subscribed please do so it helps me to continue growing my channel and to continue providing information that i think is very valuable for everyone out there and thank you for watching and like i said on the next episode, it's going to be about manufactured homes, and then we're going to do a second part, which is going to be e-commerce, and final third about why we want to become entrepreneurs, even when we just share our skills and our knowledge in doing online courses, and again, creating e-books and things that can help other people also, you know, start and help them, you know, improve their businesses. So I will be seeing you, like I said, on the next episode. And thank you, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next episode. Take care. Bye-bye.